Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to look at this cool looking synthesis. So you're probably looking at me and thinking like, well, this synthesis is quite trivial, why are we even talking about that? We're just going to take our starting material, we'll then deprotonate it with something like sodium hydride or sodium amide, which will give us the corresponding anionic species, and then we're going to react it with our alkyl halide, like so, to give us the final product. That's it, easy peasy, done. Well, if that is what you're going to be doing on the exam, unfortunately I'm going to disappoint you and tell you that the last step here is not going to work. I will remind you here that the SN2 reaction that we seemingly want to do in this case cannot work on the tertiary alkyl halide and instead the major product in this type of a sequence in this reaction would actually be the elimination reaction, so we would fail to accomplish the synthesis if we go this pathway, which means that we need to come up with something drastically different, because that one, well, that's a dead end, it doesn't work. Well, what can we do in this case? Well, let's actually use our good old friend retrosynthetic analysis. Here, the first thing that I'm noticing right away, that I will have to create this carbon-carbon bond somehow, but I know that I cannot do it via simple extension reaction of my alkynes, so I need to come up with a different way of some sort. And there are multiple different ways that we can potentially use, but the most important thing here here for us to remember will be what type of methods we know that create carbon-carbon bonds. Up to this point in your course, assuming you are in the first semester of organic chemistry, you probably only know the uh, reaction of acetylenes when we deprotonate them and uh, do reaction with primary alkyl halides or we also can use the Grignard reaction. So maybe we are going to be using the Grignard reaction here and create uh, something based on that. But you might also remember that when it comes to the Grignard reaction, that gives alcohols, not alkynes. Well, that is true, but that also means that just because we have a functional group at the beginning of our sequence, so namely here we have this alkyne, just because we have that alkyne to begin with doesn't mean that we have to drag that alkyne with us through the entire sequence. We might just as well destroy that alkyne and then recreate that. So thinking in that vein, how would they create an alkyne? Well, we make alkyne via the elimination reaction, so if I wanted to make that specific alkyne, probably the easiest starting material for that would be something of this sort. I have bromine once, I have bromine twice, and of course I have the rest of my molecule sitting over there. Now, how do I make a dihalide, the vicinal dihalide like that? Well, simple, we are going to do that via the addition to a double bond. So if I have a double bond in the middle, something of this sort, then I could create my dihalide. How do I make a double bond? Well, again, via the elimination reaction. And when it comes to the elimination reaction, then it could be a starting material that looks something like this, where my leaving group is right over here, or another possibility is going to be if I have my leaving group on the other carbon, so my leaving group is going to be right over there. And this is where the Grignard reaction is going to come from the back burner of our mind, and we'll remember that when it comes to the Grignard reaction, if I were to make the bond over here, this acts could have been an OH, and I can take this OH and I can eliminate it, making my double bond. So that means that I'm going to take the intermediate that I have over here, and I will think how to make that via the Grignard reaction. And the predecessors that would go into this reaction would be the corresponding aldehyde that looks like this, and our alkyl halide, which was converted into the Grignard reagent, so third butyl magnesium bromide. Maybe not the best reagent, but it kind of works. So that means that we need to come up with a way how to make an aldehyde from the alkyne, and luckily we already know that reaction. So now, with this retrosynthetic pathway in mind, let's assemble our entire synthesis. We are going to start with our starting material, with our alkyne. In order to convert that into an aldehyde, we're going to do the hydroboration oxidation reaction, where my reagents are going to be some sort of barane 
typically in THF or other oxygen-containing solvent, other ether-like solvents, like maybe diethyl ether, uh, dioxane, or something of that sort. And then we are going to proceed to our oxidation step, which is going to be the hydrogen peroxide in basic media. As an intermediate in this reaction, we are going to get the corresponding enol, which will quickly undergo the keto-enol tautomerization to give us the corresponding aldehyde. Then I'm going to treat that aldehyde with our Grignard reagent, where the reaction is going to happen at the carbon of the carbonyl, of course. That's going to be our step number one. And we remember that when it comes to the Grignard reaction and similar type of uh, reagents, our second step is always going to be the acidic workup to protonate the resulting alcoholate, which is going to have the negative charge on the oxygen. So that sequence is going to give me an alcohol that looks like that. Then, from this point, I'm going to do an elimination reaction. There are multiple different ways how you can do the elimination reaction, but I'm going to choose something that I can control a little bit better, so I will go with the E2 style reaction. So I will treat my alcohol with POCl3 in pyridine, giving me the double bond that I want. Then, from this point, we are going to treat that with the bromine, that going to give me the corresponding vicinal dihalide, and finally, in order to get us to our target molecule and yank those HBRs off our molecule, I'm going to use excess of sodium amide or other powerful base to be able to uh, pull both of those bromines off and create my triple bond. So when it comes to synthesis and when it comes to you planning your synthesis, never try to feed square peg into round hole. If you know that a certain reaction does not work or certain reaction has limitations, don't try to pretend that those limitations are not going to apply in your synthesis just because it's inconvenient for you. If something doesn't work, it doesn't work. So you need to come up with different ways to uh, figure out how to accomplish your synthesis. And I can guarantee that whenever you are facing some sort of a synthesis in your class, you're never going to face a synthesis that would use steps or reactions that you are not familiar with. So if one reaction or one synthetic procedure that you are thinking about does not work for your particular needs, there must be a different reaction that you have already covered in your class that would work in that case. So what do you guys think about this synthesis? Did I catch you on that? Or did you have your red flag pop up right away thinking that something is fishy about that. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you learned something new today, boop that like button and share this video with your friends and classmates to help promote it and help more students see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow!